Now here's the full node class that's uh, in the book. So they have, the first part is exactly the same as we have, and I should just point out something. Uh, the author of the book comes from a school of object-oriented programming that believes that any instance data you have should be private. And what that means is that if you write other classes that create objects of your instance, it shouldn't be able to directly refer to this data in this next. It should call a method to either get or set those values. So he's defined what are called accessor and uh, 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 setter and getter methods is a better name. So they're called set and get and this is standardly done in a lot by a lot of people in programming. Uh, it's actually the way you do things in Java. It's highly recommended in Java. In Python though, uh, if you study the people that have developed Python, they say, well, you can do this and it does give you a layer of abstraction so you never directly deal with the internal data of an object. Uh, but it's not needed unless you actually need that layer of abstraction. Uh, so the one we just showed you before had this, just these lines, so it's a much simpler object. It didn't have these separate methods, but the author uh, is one of, one of the ones that you should have this protection of your class definition so that other class users of your class can't directly access the data. They have to go through a method where you can control how it gets accessed. So the difference is uh, you can actually, if you don't have these setters and getters, you don't have to call get data and set data in implementing all the methods that we're going to work with in this part of the chapter. Uh, you can just say whatever object you have and say uh, data or next directly and access those variables. So it can simplify your code a bit. So this is in the book. So if you say uh, new node, 88, it creates a new node in memory and it sets x to point to it. So this is what things look like when you're done. This gets the data from the node and prints it. So you can try this out. Now we want a lot of operators so we have an uh, unordered list. So this is actually going to start implementing the list. So to implement the list all we need is one ver instance variable that points to the head of the list. When we first make the list, which is init is going to initialize, we only need that one instance variable. And since there won't be any items on it yet, it will just point to none. We're going to have is empty. We'll check if the list is empty. It just checks if the head is equal to none. That means there's no items on the list. So it just returns the result of this comparison, true or false. Now let's look at add. So this actually puts an item on the list. Now when you're, whenever you're doing things with list, you have to consider uh, the different cases that might arise. So when you add an item, does it work if there's no items on the list? Does it work if there's only one item already on the list? Does it work if there's any number of items on the list? Uh, so whenever you're looking at writing code for working with list, uh, you have to consider special cases where there's nothing on the list and you want to add something, or there's a lot of things on the list you want to add something. So you have to make sure that each of those cases work properly. Sometimes you have to write special code to handle a special case. Uh, in this case, there's one way of doing the code will handle any situation. So what we do is we call add, we have an item. We create a brand new node we're going to add to the list. We store it in temporary. And then we set uh, the next value of this new node by referring to temp uh, to the head of the list. So we're, we're setting the new node to point whatever the head used to point to. And then finally we set the head to point to this new node. So why we do that, uh, let's look at actually what happens. So here's the code. So in line one, we create an unordered list. So we end up, this is what happens after we've just done this one line. T is a new unordered list, and its internal self.head will point to none. So we use this uh, kind of uh, indicate that it points to none graphically. Okay, now inside the self.add, we're going to do uh, after t.add54, we want it to look like this. We want the head to point to the new item. And then the, the reference that points to none. So here's the steps now to add something else. So we're adding node 33. 
to a list that already exists, so things are a little different. So we get temp, we do the same three steps, so we're going to step through them. So the first step, it makes a new node, so temp points to the new node. Uh, the second step, it uh, sets temp.setNext to point to head. So head's pointing to 65. So now we're saying, well, let's have temp's next value also point to 65. So you can see that uh, they're both pointing to 65. And you can see here's the list, the new list. All we have to do in the last step is set the head to point to this. We had to use a temp value because if we just set self head to point to this new node right away, it would forget the rest of the list because we didn't have the new node pointing to the rest of the list first. So after the last step, uh, basically we're replacing what head used to point to. This goes away and head now points to the new node. So now you've added one item to the list. And finally, uh, temp goes away when it returns. So an important part of list is traversing the list. We're going to look at a lot of operations where you have to traverse the list. Uh, so unlike a Python list or an array, uh, you can't just access to the middle of it to, to go to the third item. You have to actually start at the beginning and follow the links, and that's called traversing the list. Uh, there's a lot of operations you use. If you're searching for an item, you have to look at every item on the list. If you're inserting an item at the end, you have to traverse to the end of the list to insert it. Even if you want to get a count, uh, you may have to traverse the list. Uh, so let's, for example, want to get the third element of a list. We're going to see how we actually do this. So we're going to look at some generalized code to do this. But basically, you have a pointer. And in the book, they use the word current. And you set it to the head of the list. So that's now it's pointing to whatever head is pointing to. While current is not none, so as long as we're pointing to something, we're going to loop. And so we're pointing, in the, if head pointed to something the first time, current's going to be the first item on the hit list. And we could do something with it here. So it says place your code for current, whatever you want to do with it. Maybe you want to look at the value. Maybe you just want to count them. So you would place some code here. And then finally, before you loop again, you set current to the next item in the list. So you get the next item from current, and you replace that for current. So then when it comes back here, now current will point to the second item in the list. If this was the last item in the list, get next will get a none, and that would cause the loop to stop. So this would actually stop when it reaches the end of the list. So we're going to see this code in, used in a lot of places here. So here's a list that already exists. So you can see we put a bunch of numbers on it, and we've got the head, so you got from left to right. Uh, when we add things, they go on this end, and this is the back of the list, this is the head of the list. So when we run that code, current points to the first item, uh, and then it points to the second item, and then it points to the third item, and then the fourth item, and then the last item, and then just before it exits, it's going to be set to null. So when it's set to none, uh, that actually causes it to exit. Now let's get the length. So here's the actual code. This is actually inside of a method to get the length, the return of the length. Uh, so inside the method, it sets current to the head. It sets count to zero, so it's going to count what number they're on. While current is not equal to none, they increment the count. So if the if we just saw our first item count would become 1 here. So we add 1 to the count. And uh, so if we stopped at this point, it would indicate we've just found one item. So what we look at the next item, and we loop, and if it's still not none, we increment count again. So when this loop is all done, count will actually be the length of the list. Here's if we want to return the ith element. So suppose we want to get uh, implement the get method where you say get and you say two to get the second item or the index number two. So this is going to do that. So it's similar to counting. We're just going to see that uh, it counts, but it when it reaches the count it's looking for, it's going to return the current node. Uh, so we have uh, current equals head, count equals zero. While the current is not equal to none, it's going to check is the count I'm on equal to the index I'm 
I'm looking for. So if we're looking at the first one, uh, count will still be zero and i would be zero. It would return that element. And actually, in this method, we actually want to return the data. So let me append that here. We should really say return dot get data. We're not actually returning the node itself, but the data inside the node. So I'll, I'll fix that. Okay, and then we have uh, increment the count. So that's from the general case. And after it's incrementing the count, uh, it then goes to the next node, goes back to loop. It's going to go back in here. The count will now be one or for the second item. It checks if it matches and so on. And so that's how you implement the get the ith element. Here's to look for matching an element. So we want to search through the list until uh, we have uh, some data we want to check, we want to look for. So I broke the whole method here. So we search, uh, searching for this item. So we set current to head. While current is not equal to none, if the data of current is equal to that item, we found it. So we just return true. And then we, if it, well, if it didn't find it, uh, it's going to get to here and it's going to advance to the next node. And so this loop will keep going until it either finds it or it reaches none, which means it ran out of list. And if it ends the while and it's reached none, it's going to return false.